Hello traders and happy Friday the 13th. So things are progressing well with our trades. Now on the surface it may not look like it. I'll get into that in a couple minutes. Before I get into that I want to mention one specific thing. I opened a new calendar trade today in the class. Now calendars are kind of a very unique animal. They don't act the way people think they're going to act. They don't act the way most modeling software shows that they're going to act and I've had my students asking me for probably almost a year now to you know prepare a deep dive calendar class uh, much like I did <clears throat> excuse me with the deep dive butterfly class and I kept pushing that back pushing that back because there isn't a good piece of software out there in my mind to illustrate some of the key things that need to be illustrated and understood about time spreads um, diagonals and calendars so finally 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 after uh, reaching out to my friends at option strat uh, Heath and his team went and they added a key function that they released here about a week ago that <clears throat> makes the demonstration of um, calendars and diagonals uh, all of a sudden now I can illustrate some things that are going to really drive home how those things work. The big misconception with calendars and diagonals or what are commonly known as time spreads is that they're vega positive. That means that you put them on in low volatility and then when volatility increases that's when they become profitable. And um, that that is not the case. Uh, it can be the case but it could just as easily be exactly the opposite. And if you don't understand these nuances, uh, calendars and diagonals are a very dangerous trade for people to get into. So if you have an interest in calendars and diagonals, and one of the big benefits of calendars and diagonals, if you look at this one, I'll just pop it open here for a second, is that you can have um, a very good reward to risk ratio in these trades and they can decay very rapidly and put you into profit in in a fairly short order so this particular trade has a maximum risk on it of around fourteen hundred dollars has a maximum reward you know pushing over six thousand dollars now we are not ever expecting to get that maximum reward at least i'm not because i won't hold this thing to expiration on uh two fridays out fourteen days out. That said, uh, these are very good trades that will decay fairly rapidly and when they do um, you can just snag your you know 10 15 20 percent profit in a few days in many cases if you enter them right and if you know what you're looking for so anyhow I'm not going to get into uh, a deep dive on calendars and diagonals here but do know that I will be releasing that product on November 1st and those of you that are signed up on my website at SJG Trades, I will be sending out an email to all of my subscribers there offering them a discount, a pre-release discount for purchasing this product in the next couple of weeks. I hope to get that email out early next week. So if you're not signed up on the website yet, just go to SGJ, sjgtrades.com. And in a minute or so, a little pop-up will come up allowing you to put in your email address. And if you get that in there uh, here in the next couple days, then I will make sure that you're included in the email that will grant the discount for this class that will soon be released. So back to our regularly scheduled program where we're going uh, through our trades. So another thing to notice this week is that volatility has increased. And we can take a look at that here. We can see this light blue line is the implied volatility. And it's, it's increased quite a bit here. And the, when that increases, anytime you have a calendar, uh, or excuse me, anytime you have a butterfly style trade, that tends to put volatility pressure on these trades. And so where this trade had been up to about $300 in profit, $320 in profit, right now that volatility is dropping this T0 line down. Same thing is happening here same things happening here same thing is happening here to some extent now what's nice about this is this also gives you a great opportunity to enter new trades or adjust trades which we did with this one yesterday which we did with this one yesterday um, so 
The other nice thing about these is as soon as that volatility starts to release, uh, let me just pop this trade open here. And let's just say that our, our volatility releases a little bit. You will see that this quickly comes into nice uh, profitability, or in this case, gets back to this upper wing at about a 350 uh, profit, somewhere in that general range. So that's what we're looking to have happen on these. If our market stabilizes next week and we get a little bit of just a, just a stalling in the market, um, all of these trades will quickly start uh, showing more profitability. <clears throat> They're positioned in such a way right now that that's exactly what's going to happen. These lines are going to raise up on all of these uh, relatively quickly, even if the underlying price doesn't move. Or if the underlying price moves up a little bit um, and volatility decreases, that's also going to help all of these various trades. So I really like the way these different trades are positioned at this point. Um, and uh, I didn't show the PL graph. I guess I should show that it hasn't changed in the last two weeks because we haven't um, closed out any new trades and that works off of closed out trades. But let me just pause here and I'll pull that up. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is the equity curve of all the trades uh, that I have shared out with the class since uh, December 1st of last year when I launched the service. And again, keep in mind that if you have a full five trades open, a full five butterflies, or sometimes we work calendars into there, if you have those trades open, um, on average, uh, they could have as much as $2,500 of risk in each trade as that trade starts. Um, which would mean if you had five trades open with $2,500 in risk, you'd have about $12,500 at risk. And you can see that we're up over $15,000. So we've had more than 100% return on equity uh, within the last 10 months, something along those lines. And my expectation is that later next week, we should be able to start to close out a couple of these other trades that I think if all goes according to plan, I think might pop us up here to a new high in the equity curve as well. So um, again, overall, I really like the way things are. I like the positions that are on right now. Um, I do want to get into a little bit of uh, market analysis or technical analysis here. So when our market sold off to about this point here a few weeks ago, I was thinking that we might get a stall or a bounce there. And we actually did for a couple of days, but then we collapsed right down through that. When we rallied back, I was expecting that this was gonna be kind of our stall point just because of the prior action there. And it was, that was a stall point. Um, and then when we started selling off again, I had a fairly strong conviction that this particular trend line, if I zoom out here, um, that particular trend line, which has a fair amount of history behind it. I mean, it's, it's been a trend line that has been intact for some time here and has multiple points of touch that I figured that that trend line was probably going to hold and we might get a bounce off of that. Not only was the trend line a factor, but this yellow line coming across here also is a bit of a factor in my mind because it was prior resistance. And we're not talking exact numbers here. We're talking a general range or a zone. And then the final thing, this blue line here, is the final piece of the puzzle that basically made me think that, you know, we're going to get a bounce here because that's the 200 day moving average. And the 200 day simple moving average is a big, um, uh, a big buy indicator for many, I'll call old school investors. Uh, it's something that, you know, many times when the market pulls back to around the 200 day moving average, that's when a lot of buyers step in and, and figure that that's maybe a good time to buy, especially when we're in an uptrend. So you're in an uptrend, you get a pullback to that line. So all of those things combined made me feel we were going to get a bounce here. Now that bounce, I was expecting to come up to this red line right here. And that if it came up to that line, I was thinking, yeah, okay, we should stall there. We should stall, chop sideways a little bit. Well, we ended up just blowing right through that. We had uh, three very strong days in a row here and uh, blew right up through. 
And then I said the next line I would expect to stall at would be here around the 43, uh, 4400 range. And we did come right up to that, stalled, and then it started rolling back down. Now, at this point, my expectation is still probably, and I can enlarge this back a little bit now, probably a little bit of stalling right in around where this red line is because of the prior res or support here, support here. Again, it was support for a couple days, uh, but then it dropped through. So I'm thinking that we might get some support here. If we do, I would expect from here that we would rally back up this way from 42.26 up to 43.84, so that's uh, what a 200, eh, 180 point rally or so. I might expect a similar rally from here, which would put us right up into this 44.50 range. But coming up to here, I would expect a little bit of a stall or a chop, uh, or possibly even a reversal around this point. Now, if our market continues down from here, which also would not really surprise me, um, I would expect it to come down to this upper trend line like it did before, and I would expect this trend line probably to hold, again, unless there's any very unusual news with, um, you know, uh, war, politics, things like that. So I'm basically right now, I'm playing for the range in my personal trading and with the class trades that I'm doing. Um, from about 4,400 down to about 4,250. So about that 150 point range is kind of the playground that I'm expecting in the next, you know, four weeks, somewhere in that general range. So trades that I'm putting on, I'm trying to keep in that general window. So that should give you kind of a bit of a summary of um, the trades that we have on and uh, my expectations for them as well as market conditions going forward based on what I'm able to see here. Again, one of the key things here is that volatility is spiking up, which is good for putting on new trades or getting better reward to risk out of trades, uh, particularly butterfly trades uh, that you put on, and or time spreads, calendars and diagonals, assuming you know precisely what to look for. They're, they're is some critical things there that you want to make sure that you look for in those trades before you put them on and doesn't mean if you don't have those specific conditions that it won't be a profitable trade it's just that if you do have those specific conditions it kind of gives you a little bit of an edge and in the trade we put on today in uh, um, in the alert service we did have those conditions and I pointed that out to people so that's it for right now. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, if you find this of interest, please like and subscribe. If you're interested in knowing more about my various educational content, um, the alert service, etc., cetera, uh, go to sjgtrades.com. I've put some information down below um, here as well with some links. There's also, um, I believe I put a link down there for a, uh, a free video about butterfly trading that will kind of walk you through some of the key things to look for in trading butterflies. So if you'd like to see that free video, you can sign up for that down below as well. So thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Have a great weekend.